How's it going guys? Kyle here with Awesome Sauce News. Today I will be building an epic portable gaming rig. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this, well the simple answer is just because I can, and because I want to. Yes, that's right, I had a few parts lying around, and I figured I might as well build something out of it. Uh, so without any further explanation, let's go into the hardware that I'm using. Uh, I got a 16 gig kit from Adata. This is their DDR3 2800 speed memory that's two 8 gig sticks. Very fast memory. For my drive, I'll be using an M5 Pro Extreme, 256 gig SSD from Plextor. The case that this is all going in is a Fractal Design Node 304. It's a mini ITX chassis. I've got a 4770K processor. It's unlocked. We can do some overclocking later. Top of the line, cream of the crop Haswell Core CPU, Intel Core CPU. Resurator 3 Max cooler from Zalman. I haven't heard too much about this cooler, but hopefully it'll serve me well. It'll go nicely in this Node 304 since it supports 120 millimeter rads. So we'll do some water cooling there. Maximus 6 Impact motherboard. This is Asus's first ROG board in mini ITX form factor, so I'm really excited to use this. Should be uh, really cool looking um, inside of this chassis. And uh, second to last, we've got a High Current Pro 850 watt power supply from Antec. This is totally overkill for this build, but uh, like I always say, better to go overkill than underkill. Um, so we'll see how this power supply works out for me. And last but not least, the beast of this build is the GTX 780 Ti. Uh, GeForce card from NVIDIA. So with that said, why don't we get on to a little time-lapse build. Stop. So right about here is where I realized that this power supply isn't going to fit inside this case. 
and even if I were able to mount the unit to the mounting bracket, there still wouldn't be enough clearance for the GTX 780 Ti. The power supply is simply too long. Luckily I had a High Current Pro 650 watt nearby, which is not only short enough to fit in this case, but it's also got just the right amount of power delivery for the system. The sacrifice here is that the unit is non-modular, so I had to work a bit harder to manage the unused cables, but as you'll see, I didn't have too much trouble. So with that said, on with the build! And that pretty much wraps up the build. It's done. Woohoo! And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I like the lighting. I think the lighting looks cool, even though all the colors are mixed matched. I think it kind of just gives a nice little aesthetic. Even though the when the enclosure's on, you can't see the lights anyway, I think it looks pretty wicked uh, when the enclosure's off. The non-modular cables weren't too much of a hassle. I just kind of bundled them up and shoved them into one corner next to the video card and that uh, front fan. I kind of scooted it off to the, the side a little bit so that there's still some nice airflow coming from that fan. So it's not completely blocked off. Uh, but once again, it's just one of those limitations that you have to deal with uh, with a non-modular power supply, especially when you're working in a smaller uh, mini ITX chassis like the Node 304. But other than that, I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. Uh, I still need to install an operating system on it, and maybe I'll do some tests. Maybe I'll even do a follow-up video with some gaming benchmarks and uh, you know other things like temps and acoustics, for example. Uh, but let me know what you guys think, and if you'd like to see that future video, uh, let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what you think of this rig, if you think it's awesome sauce or weak sauce. Uh, so just leave a comment based on how you feel. I'm curious to know. Also, like or dislike the video accordingly, and be sure to subscribe to Awesome Sauce News for more tech videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.